From 27 June until 29 June, we at the Auction House Künker will be holding our summer auctions in Osnabrück. Many customers will flick through our catalog from page 1 until the last page because they do not collect according to a specific geographical region, but rather adhering to a certain motif. One of the most popular subjects in numismatics is ships. This is why this film is dedicated to all collectors who dream of a numismatic circumnavigation of the world. The English King Edward III was the first medieval ruler to prominently put a ship on his coins. This happened at the beginning of the Hundred Years' War. Edward was the deceased French king's male relative next in line. Therefore, he declared himself King of France in 1340. This is the historic background of the nobles, the greatest and heaviest medieval gold coins in circulation. It was regularly minted starting in 1344. We can see the king facing with his sword drawn. His coat of arms prominently features the French lilies, in order to emphasize Edward's claim to the French crown. To him, the English Channel isn't an obstacle, but instead a fast way of transport, which is illustrated by the king standing on a cog. The cog was the most important type of ship of the 14th century. We can clearly distinguish the forecastle and aftercastle. They are elevated platforms where archers could spot enemy ships. After all, the English longbows were famous. In the background we can see the rigging which supported the sails. This coin was minted more than 60 years later. Still, the noble was one of the most important trading coins, and for that there was a very simple reason. The king forced merchants who wanted to buy English wool to use English money. What does all of this have to do with this monumental church in a village of 3,000 souls named Long Melford? Well, the wool trade made some rural communities so rich that they built gigantic churches, which are called wool churches by art historians. Since 1475, the popes had the Fiorino di Camera minted. It shows the Prince of the Apostles, St. Peter, on the reverse. He is standing in a stylized fisher boat and casting his net. Thus, the coin is reminiscent of the calling of Peter, recorded by St. Luke's Gospel. Christ's words, from now on you will be catching people, was crucial for the self-presentation of the popes. It was the validation for the pope's reign over the Catholic Church. The battleships that went round the Mediterranean in those times probably looked something like this ship, which is shown on a reverse of a medal from the city of Amsterdam. It is a galley. This type of ship was known since antiquity, but in the late Middle Ages they had modernized it. We can see one stern rudder instead of two side rudders. The galley also has two masts with latine sails. But the most important drive still came from the oars. They made the galley faster and easier to maneuver than any other sailing ship, especially during a calm. This was important for the galley, since its military penetrating power was dependent on both speed and mobility. They would use a ram bow in a sea battle to ram the side of an enemy's ship. The die cutter of our medal did not know this, since he misinterpreted the ram bow as a bowsprit used to support the foremast. He only designed the medal in 1655, and galleys had become rare by then. After all, the last, and at the same time the biggest sea battle where galleys were used, took place at Lepanto in 1571. Why did the artist resort to an outdated type of ship? Simply because he was depicting a ship from a Greek myth and it had to look different from the modern galleon. This depiction too does not portray an actual ship. The artist who designed the 1679 Reichsthaler on occasion of the treaties of Nijmegen 
try to accurately transfer the biblical tradition to the effigy word by word. As a sign of the new hope raised by the treaties of Nijmegen, he depicted Noah's Ark. But the word Ark comes from the Latin Arca, which means box. And that is what the artist put on the hull, a box. Sebastian Dadler, the designer of this exquisite medal, shows the sea battle at Femaren on 13 October 1644 between the Swedish and the Danish fleet, quite realistically. The age of the cannons had started. Can you see these little clouds of steam? It is the muzzle flash of the cannons. At the very left, one ship has caught fire. The crew is trying to get ashore in little boats. We have already seen a depiction of one of these lifeboats that were dragged behind on a rope. This medal shows us what a galleon looked like in detail. The greatest difference between the galleon and the galley is of course the gun ports on the sides of the ship. In landman's term, the hatches for the hidden cannons. Human muscle power was substituted by additional sails. Coins and medals often feature the impressive three-masted ship with a mainmast, mizzenmast and foremast. But the most spectacular part of the galleon was the stern, which was richly decorated with artwork. That is why most of the time galleons are shown from behind. We often see a coat of arms or a flag there. Our medal was minted between 1708 and 1711 by command of Johann Wilhelm, Elector Palatine. Consequently, his monogram was put on the stern and the Palatine coat of arms is represented on the flag. Whoever has visited the city of Stockholm may have seen such a stern in real life, as the wreck of the Swedish galleon Vasa, which sank in 1628 on its maiden voyage, lies in Stockholm. The stern was so attractive that the artist sometimes could not decide if he wanted to portray the stern or the swelled sails. As a result, this Hamburg medal from 1714 curiously shows the galleon on the left going backwards with its sails swelled. Certainly, there is always a reason for the depiction of a ship in numismatics. It is often and gladly used to commemorate a journey, like in this case of Elizabeth Christine of Brunswick Wolfenbüttel. As the inscription of the medal reads, she was supposed to sail to Spain on 19 April 1707 to marry the man who would later become Emperor Charles VI. But her departure failed. Elizabeth Christine was Protestant. She had to publicly convert to the Catholic faith before she could travel to Vienna where the Emperor married her in 1708. German numismatists call this coin type Reisetale, which translates to voyage crown. Nevertheless, it does not hint at an actual journey the Duke of Brunswick, Augustus the Younger, made. This coin illustrates his motto, everything with caution. On the right, you can see a traveler standing in front of a ship which has lowered the gangway. As soon as the traveller has crossed it, he is exposed to wind and weather. His fate is no longer in his own hands. Or, as the Latin inscription on the lower edge states, Jacta est alea, the die is cast. The Guinea ducats of the Prussian prince-elector Frederick Wilhelm, which were minted between 1682 and 1696, are rather famous. We can see one of them here, with an impressive ship on the reverse, of course. It is reminiscent of a time when Prussia had a colony in Guinea, where they got the gold to mint the coins from. This was not lucrative, though. It cost two ducats to make one single Guinea ducat. We could show you many more coins and medals with ships on them in both catalogues of the upcoming Künke sale especially since the fondness of the motif even increased in the 19th and 20th century. World War I in particular has left us numerous medals. This medal shows us one of the most well-known German battleships of all time, the light cruiser Emden. 
Between 9 September and 28 October 1914, she sank a total of 17 ships. On 9 November 1914, the Emden suffered the same fate. The Australian cruiser Sydney cracked and destroyed the ship. 136 seamen died and 197 were taken captive. The Emden had also had an excellent reputation with the enemies because of its chivalry in dealing with the crews of the defeated ships. The Emden became so famous that the sunken ship was awarded the Iron Cross. We can see it on the reverse of this medal. On the obverse, we will find the captain of the Emden, Karl von Müller. He survived and the city of Emden made him a citizen of honor upon his return. Just like all survivors of the Emden, von Müller obtained the right to take on the heritable name affix Emden. By the way, it was only 12 years later that the fate of the Emden was made into a film without sound and in black and white. The youngest film of the Emden myth was shown on German television in April of 2014. By the way, the estimate for this medal is only 100 euro, a lot of history for little money. You can see, one does not have to be a millionaire to be able to collect coins with ships on them. Well then, fair winds and following seas and long may your big jib draw. We at the Auction House Künke happily invite you to our summer auctions of 2017. Please do not hesitate to contact us if you have any further questions.